then you have to allow their body to regenerate because we've been i mean we have a great amazing god-given ability to heal in our brain that helps us um every day even when we're not thinking about it so if we can tap into that by doing the proper steps i think people can get results that they never expected so autoimmune doesn't scare me i think i think it's something that can be addressed but there's a lot of emotional stuff that goes with that as well and we have to get on the same page about everything i think as a doctor as a patient together and create realistic goals and expectations so that we can actually get the best outcomes for people hey guys i'm super excited for my next guest he has committed the last 16 years to helping people achieve their health goals and he's done all kinds of exciting things in 2011 he worked on the medical staff at the world crossfit games in 2012 he was part of the medical team for the u.s olympic team and he's done so many amazing things please welcome dr michael banman hi i appreciate you having me on here today well, let's jump right in. I want to talk about regenerative medicine because this is like a new buzzword now. Everyone's kind of talking about it. But before we do, a lot of people don't know what regenerative medicine is. Can you talk about what it is and give us some real practical explanations so people can kind of wrap their head around it? Right. So regenerative medicine really deals with um, any, any modality or any therapy that's going to try and help regenerate um, cells in your body that have broken down or have become degenerated. So um, the biggest thing that regenerative medicine does is it works with inflammation. But some examples, a, a common thing that people uh, call our office and, or email us and ask is about stem cells. That's, that's under the umbrella of regenerative medicine. But there's many other things like nutrient IVs. Um, those would help restore and regenerate um, your body to a, to a more homeostatic balance. Um, there's things like plasma rich, platelet rich plasma, sorry, that's PRP it's called. Um, and younger people will use that to actually um, help the body uh, heal three to seven times faster than it normally would. But these are really using natural um, kind of more human being based chemicals or, or um, therapies in order to help the body do things that we maybe in medicine in the past have thought were impossible or, or because of our research and because of the way we use medications, um, we thought that maybe we couldn't achieve these kind of health outcomes. So regenerative medicine is opening up a whole new um, way of taking care of patients because we can see some really amazing results in a really short period of time. So what what are some things you guys do actually in your office? So I, do you guys do the drip therapy uh, nutrient IVs in your office? We do, yeah, we do those. Um, we do PRP a lot for athletes. Um, so if someone has we had an Olympic hopeful come in and he actually got an injury while he was competing and his arms started to shrink, his chest started to shrink and we injected him with PRP. And within three weeks, he was back in the gym where he thought he was gonna have to have surgery on his neck because the nerves were being crushed. Things like that are, are becoming more and more common. And then we also do uh, umbilical cord um, tissue injections, which are, are uh, Wharton's jelly, which ha have stem cells in them a lot of times. Um, but those, those types of things, we see people avoid knee replacement, hip replacement, shoulder injuries get better. I personally have a story about my knee um, and that's how we kind of brought it in. And that's how I started to own a medical clinic is because of my own personal experience. So talk about the PRP, the platelet-rich plasma. That's a tongue twister, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So explain exactly where, where is that platelet-rich plasma coming from that's getting injected into you? Right. So in your bloodstream, in your blood system, there's healing factors and there's oxygen delivery factors and there's waste factors. There's a lot of different things that are going on in there. Um, so we draw someone's blood. We take about 10 mils of their blood. They come into the office 
uh, the medical practitioner will draw that. And then we have a machine that will spin it around and it will actually force the red blood cells, the waste and the oxygen type component down to the bottom. And then the platelets and the plasma will actually rise to the top. They'll get separated. And then we can draw out the platelets and some, a little bit of the plasma. And we, and we can use that because that's really the healing factor in your blood. So when we concentrate that, it's, it's the super juice. It's the thing that, that helps, uh, helps your body heal at an accelerated rate. It's amazing. It's, it's awesome. So you're basically taking your own blood and then injecting that, those platelet rich plasma back into your own body. Right. Yeah. So you're using your body's own healing capacity, but you're leveraging it by taking out some of the things that slow it down. So obviously over the course of your life, you do things that cause inflammation, which is a big, I, I think one of the keys to fixing your problems, your health problems. Um, and if we can get rid of some of the inflammatory um, issues that people experience at a quicker, um, faster pace, then they get a, a really quick win under their belt and then they can get back to exercising or, you know, if, whatever their, their issues they're struggling with, with their health. Mm. So I just watched two movies recently and they were really talking about uh, being vegan, but they are, one of the movies is called What the Health. Have you seen that movie? Yes, I have. And the other one is called um, The Game Changer. Have you seen that I, one? I haven't seen that one though. Okay. So that's on Netflix. You'll have to see that. Yeah. And so they really talk about some of these athletes that have gone vegan and they're still performing really, really well. Yeah. Um, just going vegan. What is your thoughts on that? Um, I think everyone should tailor their, we, we sit down in our office, we sit down with people and figure out what their objectives are. So I think, I, I don't know that any one specific diet is good for everyone so i think whatever someone's objective is to work within those parameters know what your body's needs are um, figure out how different nutrients that you need to perform at your top level would fit into what you're consuming i think that's the most important part and I, i'm i'm of the belief system that whether you're vegan or vegetarian or carnivore or paleo or whatever the case is is that you keep your inflammation down in your body and that you're, you have the ability to sustain that over a long period of time, because I think we've gotten into trouble just trying to, um, trying to go on these quick diets as you're, you're in that space, you know, a lot more yes. about that stuff. Um, but I think, I think a lifestyle is more important and then tailoring your habits around your lifestyle is a huge way to um, help you get, the most out of what you're trying to do. Well, yeah, in my, I just finished my second edition of my book, Waste Away, and I talk to people about how they don't have to deprive themselves when it comes to food, but everyone has to decide for themselves what are their red light, yellow light, and green light foods. And what your red light foods are is that when you eat that food, you're causing your body massive amounts of inflammation. For whatever reason, your yeah. body doesn't do well on that particular food. And then right. you might have a yellow light food where you go, this food for my body, you know, doesn't do well. And it could be something healthy that people would think is healthy. Maybe you don't do well with red peppers, you know, right. or something right, like right. that. You just, that body inflames you for whatever reason. So for you personally, do you have any red light or yellow light foods for yourself personally? Well, I mean, my red light foods are potato chips. I mean, I'm like, <laughs> that's a pretty obvious one, but, uh, as far as red light, I, I've, I would say probably bread for me. I know that if I eat any grains, I get really inflamed. Um, so I try to I try to do what I can to if I am going to consume that, which I try not to, but I'll try to eat sourdough or sprouted sprouted grain stuff. But I find even with the sprouted grain, I get inflammation. I know. Um, so yeah, I would say, I mean, f for guilty pleasures, it would it would be chips hands down. But um, but for for leaning more towards the healthy side, things with grains in them, oatmeal, pasta, breads, those kind of things. 
Gotcha. Yeah. So I, now the question I ask all my guests, take me through a normal day in the life of Michael. So like, what did you eat yesterday? Um, what, what was your diet looking like? Yeah, yesterday? it was funny. Uh, yesterday I, speaking of depriving yourself, uh, yesterday I did a fast. Oh. So, so yeah. So, um, I did actually have some bone broth and, um, bone broth soup in the evening when I got home from work just to keep my electrolytes up, get some collagen in and, but I'm, it's a pretty boring story. Uh, water. That's, <laughs> that's I great. A, I have an insulin regulating supplement that I use and, and then, um, and then I had some, some soup, so to speak when I got home. Awesome. Now, how often do you, so was it a 24 hour fast? Was it a 48 yeah. hour fast? 24 yeah, I, just, hour? I just went from like seven to seven, seven in the evening till seven the next evening. So Gotcha. Yeah. But this, this week, my goal is to do, uh, I'm, uh, I really like fasting. Mm -hmm, um, me too. I think it's really great for your stem cells in your body. Uh, it's been shown. It's, it's really one of the only practices that's been shown to actually grow your cortical, um, to, to create cortical growth in your brain, uh, to get your brain back. Um, and it's really, really helpful for inflammation. So I know um, this week I want to try and do a 72 hour fast, but I started out with just a 24 hour one this week. And then I want to do over the next month, I'm trying to do three 48 hour fasts, just part of my goals. Um, I don't know that everyone's at that level where they want to do that kind of stuff. It doesn't, I don't think that people think that's um, the funnest thing to do when, when you're looking from the outside in, but your body just, it, it's an amazing practice. It's an amazing way to clear your head and get yourself healthy again. Yeah. I've been recently, I've been doing at least two to three 24 hour fasts every week. And then really for the last three weeks, I've been doing, um, like each week I did a 48 hour fast every awesome. week. I did That's a 48 hour one. So good. Um, it's so good. It, it's really magical. You don't like doing it when you're doing it. You're kind of like, uh, oh, why am I doing this? But yeah, there's so many amazing things that happen from them. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. But as you know, I've interviewed over a thousand women and every time I've watched a thin eater eat, I realize that maintaining a healthy weight is a skill that can be taught and mastered over time. That's why I created a video course that will teach you all the tips that I learned to help me lose over 30 pounds. It's way more powerful to watch the thin eaters than even to listen or to read it. Go to ChantelRayWay.com slash video for a free glimpse. If you're wanting to take yourself to the next level, everyone needs a coach. Every professional player has a coach. We want to come alongside you and help you in your journey. Go to ChantelRayWay.com slash coaching. I just had someone listen to the audiobook three times and she just emailed me and she said by her listening to the audiobook three times, that's what did it. That's what allowed her to really lose the weight. We have an amazing offer for you. It's the second edition of my book, which has tons more information. It has the audiobook, the ebook. It normally runs for $29.99. You can get it today for $4.99. Go to ChantelRayway.com slash deal to get it. Now back to the show. So yeah. let's jump right into the listener questions. This okay. is from Trevor in Duluth, which I'm not sure where that is. About Minnesota. Oh, it is? Okay, good. Good. See, I'm not good at geography. <laughs> I'll help you out. <laughs> yeah. If you know where it is, always tell me. Yeah. About four years ago, I tore my ACL. I had surgery and I did physical therapy, but I'm still having ongoing pain. Is there anything else I can do at this point? Yeah. So I'm not sure where Trevor's at with the testing as far as what his, his knee actually looks like, but I can relate a story about my knee. I tore my ACL, completely ruptured it, um, ruptured my MCL, my ACL, and my LCL, and both my meniscus. My knee was just blown apart playing basketball. Oh, my and, gosh. Um, so for me, I mean, I did, I did a stem cell injection into my knee, and I, I avoided surgery because the, the surgeons told me I needed reconstructive surgery. So I don't think Trevor's problem is, is to that level. Maybe it is, but – there's a lot of scar tissue that builds up. And, you know, I mentioned these quick wins that we get for health. I think that's really essential. 
and pain pain usually comes from scar tissue coating a nerve or coating the 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 nerves inside the cartilage and the quickest way to get rid of inflammation is by doing something like prp or or um, some kind of regenerative injection so that's that's what i recommend Okay, awesome. This next one's from Lindsay in Chattanooga. I'm seven months pregnant and I've only gained about 18 pounds, but lately my back has been hurting so badly. It's especially terrible when I have to get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom. The pain starts my lower back and travels down my left leg. What could it be and what could I do? Yeah, I think maybe you and I would both agree on this one that inflammation causes a lot of pain in people's bodies. And so um, in my experience uh, in, in helping people with their spines, with their backs, um, pain usually comes, pain and inflammation usually builds up because of improper movement or improper motion. So um, I, would, I would have the back checked out by someone who's a movement specialist, a physical therapist, a chiropractor, or um, go to the doctor and get x-rays and see what is actually going on in there. I'm a really big on x-rays i'm not sure where you stand on that but I yes. think um, x-rays are a huge way to, instead of guessing it gives you a lot of confidence as a as someone who's getting the x-rays to understand what what's going on internally and then you don't have to guess you can actually make a great plan going forward so we know that pain again i was reading another study last night that when you have pain your body actually creates more pain, more nerve fibers that deal with pain. So you actually, as you have pain and you continue with pain, your body will generate more pain for you to make you aware if you can't control the inflammation. And they say it all stems from inflammatory chemicals. So another great way is to just do a quick fast, 12 hour fast, 18 hour fast, um, but definitely get the back checked out um, with x-rays. That's That would be my, my advice. Now, what is um, the longest fast you've ever done before? I did seven days with water, seven days, just mm -hmm. water. Yeah. That's so awesome. That was, that was really hard for the first three days. And then after that, I felt like a million bucks. Wow. And was there, did you take any bone broth or so you just did water, nothing just else? Water. Just I water. Think, I think one day I had coconut water for mm -hmm. one I think I had one bottle of coconut water because I was getting a little uh, physically in, in Canada, I was adjusting hundred people a day, 130 people a day in my chiropractic office. So it was pretty physical. Um, so I, I just felt like, and I just need some pick me up here. So I think I had some coconut water one day. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, we got a new question in today and let's see if you want to answer this one. This sure. is from Katie in Chicago. She says, hi there. Love your podcast. I like how you range a range of topics, especially th related to thyroid. I've been diagnosed with hypo and Hashimoto's. However, my levels are normal and feel great overall, especially when I eat 80, 20. My question is if my levels are fine, can I still donate blood or are people with autoimmune not supposed to sending God's love? Thank you, Katie in Chicago. Um, awesome. Awesome question. I think, I mean, I'm, I, I wouldn't say that in that space that I, I would have the best answer for that, but I could give my recommendations that um, I think it's really important to take care of yourself. And I, know, I hear the heart behind the question that sounds like she wants to help people out. Um, but I think, I think a, good, a good baseline is to let your body regulate and let it heal itself up so that maybe you hold off on that until your levels have been stable for, uh, I usually give the general, general time because in, sci in the research it shows about two years, once you have stable levels, then I think it should be fine to go ahead a lot of times people are given diagnoses and I think we shouldn't hold on to those for the rest of our life, you know, like autoimmune problems. I think people can overcome those things. So that kind of fits into there too. But if she's stable for two years, I think, I think it would be fine. So have you had any people come in with you with autoimmune issues and has there been anything, um, yeah. anything that you've done that you've said, this has really been powerful 
for the autoimmune? Yeah, we, we take the approach of, uh, in my office first, we want to do a great uh, workup with people, do a great exam, physical exam, as well as check out all the physical history and the uh, medical history. But um, what, what I've found with things like RA and Crohn's ulcerative colitis, all those different kinds of inflammatory autoimmune, you might call them conditions, um, is that you have to, again, address the inflammation. It seems to be an underlying theme, but address the inflammation, address the structure of the area, whether it's the gut or different joints or muscles. Um, you have to address those specific areas and then you have to stabilize the person then you have to allow their body to regenerate because we've been i mean we have a great amazing god-given ability to heal in our brain that helps us um every day even when we're not thinking about it so if we can tap into that by doing the proper steps i think people can get results that they never expected so autoimmune doesn't scare me i think i think it's something that can be addressed but there's a lot of emotional stuff that goes with that as well and we have to get on the same page about everything I think as a doctor, as a patient together and create realistic goals and expectations so that we can actually get the best outcomes for people. Um, awesome. And then do you have any tips for someone who someone says, look, I want to do a seven day fast, you know, like I want to work my way up to that for you. Like, did you have a plan where you said, look, I'm going to start with a 24 hour and then I'm going to move to 48 hour and then I'm going to do five day or how did you personally do it? And do you have any tips to work up to someone going from never doing a fast to all the way going up to a seven day fast? Yeah, it can be daunting. So I like, I, I, when I did it first, I started with little, uh, kind of played little games and I would do like a, have you heard of a Daniel fast? Yes. Yeah. So I would do a Daniel fast first. Well, let me, let I'm me still... ask you, because this is one of my, one of my things about the Daniel fast that, you know, I get annoyed with, which if you read the Bible, the first time he talks about fasting in the book of Daniel, he says he did 10 days with nothing but vegetables. And then they moved to other, you know, if you look up what is the Daniel fast in the, and in the internet, people have all kinds of definitions of what you can eat right. on the Daniel fast. And people yeah. are eating like bean burritos <laughs> yeah. because they're not eating meat. And I'm like, what in the world? Like, no, yeah. bean burritos, no, you're eating and yeah. now you're well, saying Daniel, Daniel fast. Daniel went down to the local taco stand and got a bean burrito. You didn't know, no. But I, I think like if you if you start with a meal, and fast and just eat vegetables for a meal, to me that's more like a Daniel fast. And when I talk about when I talk about um, fasting, I think it's really important. There's also stipulations on that, like for myself for I'm eating living healthy food like why am I gonna do a fast and then go back down to in and out burger after and break my fast you know I had a I had one of my patients he did a 40-day fast wow 40 days and then he broke it did he just do with water <laughs> he did it with just water wow and he he broke it by having a hamburger and I was thinking <sighs> you're he's he's a little a little wild and crazy but but uh those Canadians, I tell you, but, but, um, the Daniel fast, I think you have to, you can't, you can't take that principle and then try and fit it into our culture. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you can't say, Oh, well, well, Daniel potato chips are vegetables. So he probably had potato chips too. Like that's not, that's not the point of it. The point of it is to decrease inflammation in your body. And if it's for a spiritual purpose, then, you go and do your praying, you go and do your, you know, getting to know God better during the time when you would eat. It's not a time to, to do whatever you feel like doing. It's a focused time for your body or for your spirituality or whatever it is. So yeah, I play games like that. I, for one meal, I would just fast from something that I think I can't do without and just try and try and get that win, get that win under my belt. Or I would do like for breakfast, do some bone broth, you know, um, for, 
which I lived with a Korean guy in college, and he ate like what we would eat for dinner. He ate for breakfast. So there's a lot of ways around the world that people eat that we're not aware of, but they're healthier than us. So we, we've taken things, tried to make them fast and easy, but I think natural raw food is the best way to go just as, a, as an initiator. Then maybe do something like uh, if you can do clean smoothies, try that for a day. So for have three smoothies in one day. And it just gives your digestive system a chance to relax. It's easy to digest, easy to absorb. And then you've done your fast for the day with smoothies. And then the next day, try and do one, one smoothie at lunch and, and skip morning, the, the breakfast meal. And then it slowly progresses into, wow, this is fun. You know, it's not as bad as I thought. And I've had people, diabetics, who tell me, oh, I can't fast. I need my, my insulin. I, you know, I can't, I can't do this. And we've got them off their insulin within, you know, I, I don't want to exaggerate, but within three days, they're like, oh, man, I felt terrible for two days, but now I feel amazing. Like, I haven't felt like this for 30 years. So, wow. so I think we, it starts in our mind, you know, like you're saying, that's kind of what you're alluding to is that how, you have to make it fun for yourself, but you also have to make it a challenge for yourself to get to your health goals. And that, and that's a huge, huge part of being healthy is being encouraged by yourself over and over again by, by having these small victories. Yeah, I agree. And I think that the best, the easiest fast for people to do is like what you said when you do, when once you decide, hey, I'm going to do a water fast to do seven, like you did, like, um, you know, seven at night to seven at night the next day or five yeah. o'clock at night till five o'clock the next day where yeah. you that's that's a first transition so start with that 24 hour fast then move to a 48 hour fast then move to a three day fast so that you're working your way up it's it's almost like running for a marathon right yeah, like if you were going to exactly. do a half marathon you'd first start by running one mile and then you'd run two miles and you right. know that sort of thing so i yeah. actually wrote a book called fasting to freedom it's my second book that i wrote and it's out now and it's amazing it talks all about how to work your way up to that. So it's like, instead of like the couch to 5k, it's yeah. kind of like never fasting to going to a seven day fast and kind of what breaks down to allow you to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Once you start doing it, it's pretty, it's pretty neat to see how you can progress through that. And like, even if you did a 24 hour fast, then a 36 hour fast, you're, you're really just, stopping after dinner skipping a day it's really a one day fast right you're eating breakfast the next morning right 36 hours that's seems like that's doable you know it's, yes and then, and then oh i'm gonna try another 12 hours and then i'll eat after seven tonight you know what i mean yeah. And I love, I love what you said about how the Daniel fast, how you can start with, Hey, let's start with it. If you've never done any fasting, but I do believe that you should start with just doing vegetables. Like in Daniel one twelve, it says, he says, please test your servants for 10 days and let them give us vegetables to right. eat water. He said, vegetables to eat and water to drink. And that's all he did for 10 days. Then after that, in Daniel 10, he, for, he was mourning and he, it said he, for three weeks, he ate no food, no, I mean, he ate no pleasant food, like choice food, no meat or wine. And right. so I think when you think about pleasant food, like people are saying, well, on the Daniel fast, like you said, having bread and like, to me, bread, like, I'm like, that's a choice food for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And I think part of it too, is just the principle. Like once you start getting into this stuff, you realize how, how he, he was doing that so that others could see how powerful God was. Yes. God, God's put a powerful ability to heal in our body that we sometimes think we have the ma majority of control over, but he's, he's deposited it, that in us from the time we're born till the time we die. And our job is just to steward it and be faithful to what is is right like what the bible tells us what to eat in leviticus it tells us what's good food and people may think that's legalistic or whatever it's under the law but there's still a ton of wisdom in there and mm. there's still 
God's principles w- won't stop regardless of we- whether we think they will or not. So I think that whole situation scenario was like, yeah, I'm just going to eat the vegetables and you watch, you watch and see the strength that God gives me, you know? Yeah. And he ended up being stronger. Right. Right. He ended up so. being the strongest of them all. Yeah. So best skincare awesome. in the world. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been such a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, where can listeners go to follow you and your work? Yeah. So you can follow us on Instagram at Aligned Life Med. That's our, our handle. Um, we have a we have a website as well, alignedlifemed.com. Um, so I have a YouTube channel that now that we've started in the past few months, we have some videos, we have some regenerative um, procedures that we're putting on there. People tend to get excited about seeing other people get stuck with needles. So it's pretty fun, fun to watch. Um, and I will be starting a podcast within the next couple of months. So I, hopefully I'd like to invite you yes. as one of my first guests to come on and absolutely sh- share your experiences and your wisdom. And, absolutely. uh, but right now I would say Instagram is, is pretty active. So Aligned Life Med would be where we would want that to, to direct people to go. Awesome. Well, if you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at ChantelRayway.com. We'll see you next time. Have a great one. Bye-bye.